Hi, this is Bob. I've been working on this uh, old BC-453 World War II aircraft beacon receiver. Bought it at the Fort Wayne Ham Fest. Was in terrible condition. I showed in the first video I replaced 17 of the paper capacitors and two filter capacitors and a couple of resistors. I also uh, wired up that little front panel down there. I put in a 1 8 inch uh, phone jack, it's a stereo jack, so I can plug a regular stereo headset in there or a set of stereo speakers. And you see on there also a uh, LED here I put on to show that it's on. This is the on off switch. This is the speaker jack. And this is the BFO jack. And this is the volume control. After I got those in there I found out I had the volume control backwards and I wanted to have the BFO switch so it's on when it's up. I usually wire things so that when the switch is up it's on. So I had to change those two around to reverse that. I also needed power for it so I made up this little power supply. This was an old RS-232 switch box for printers and I took everything out of it and I put a little piece, this is white aluminum siding, little piece of white aluminum siding I put on an LED here to show it was on. I was going to put this LED on to show the B plus was on and uh, I looked at it and I thought it's really not necessary so I just got them both wired so they both come on. This is a 24 volt transformer here and uh, there's a full wave bridge rectifier that changes that to 24 volts DC with a 2000 microfarad capacitor on the output to filter it and it works really nice and uh, this transformer here says Philco on it someplace. It came out of an old Philco table radio I think somebody took it out and so that also goes into a full wave bridge rectifier and that goes into a 33 microfarad 450 volt capacitor and then I've got a 500 ohm resistor and then another 33 microfarad 450 volt capacitor and then that is connected to this cable here and I've got these two uh, connectors on there. These are five pin like 807 connectors. Uh, I just had them in the junk box so I used them so I can take the power supply on and off and that is soldered into the connectors on the back. So anyways the whole thing works really nice. I uh, had a lot of a uh, lot of problems to solve uh, after I got it going. You'll see I've got an F connector here, a TV type connector. I've got uh, a uh, F connector right angle coming so that I can put the wire off to the side but as it is right now I have to put it in like that and just let it dangle on the front but that's okay I really like F connectors they'll handle up to about 500 watts as far as I know I haven't run them any higher hotter any more than that but uh, I use them all the time at two or three hundred watts so uh, I really like them and the SWR is very low and you can buy them real real cheap. You can even buy those uh, screw on uh, F6 connectors at, uh, at your big stores like Walmart and Kmart and places like that or, uh, or um, Home Depot get, get those connectors. So uh, I really like to use those. So we're going to plug in, yeah we're plugged in back there and we're going to turn on the power supply. Okay that's on and little red lights on here indicating I got the power switch up here and I got the 80 meter dipole connected Don't know where that beacon is. AZ. Have no idea. And down this way, in here, is the South Bend beacon, which is close by. Now I don't hear it right now. There it is. So it's working really good.
Sometimes you can pick up a couple of broadcast stations up at the top end here, around 550. I'll take a, take a tune up there and we'll see if we can hear something. You know, I'm just using a couple of little computer speakers, the unpowered computer speakers there. So I am very, very happy. I also, when I turned it on the first time this morning, it didn't work. And uh, the 12K8 tube there was bad, so I changed it for another one. It's interesting because that tube checked good. Also, when I tuned, uh, turned on the BFO, the BFO didn't come on. And I had checked the uh, 12SR7 tube, and uh, it checked good. But before I did anything else, I thought I'd change it. I changed it, and the BFO came right on. So even though the tubes check good sometimes, you've got to uh, be very wary about that. And sometimes you just have to try a new tube. That's the only way to do it. So I just wanted to show I got this thing working. I was really amazed when it did work. Uh, I think you saw it when I started, and it was in a mess. And I thought, well, if those IF transformers are bad or something like that, then I'm not going to be able to get it going. So uh, anyhow, it, it did. It took off and it run. So I'm real happy about that. Next step is I'm going to make a converter for the HF bands for 80 and 40 meters, which will go with it. And I'm going to run it here with this uh, ARC5 transmitter. That's the 40 meter transmitter. I'm hoping to get an 80 meter transmitter. Uh, I haven't found one of those yet, but uh, I'm sure there's one out there waiting somewhere. We'll find it. And then I want to run this uh, setup on uh, straight key night on uh, New Year's Eve. So that'll be a lot of fun. So that's it, guys. Uh, real, real bad. Uh, not really bad. Got about six inches of snow outside. It's coming down in buckets right now. And uh, looking, uh, it does look kind of bad outside, but six inches is not a lot of snow for this area. So anyhow, it's a good thing to be inside and working on the ham gear. I enjoy that on a cold, wintry day. 73s and good DX.